Good afternoon. Today we're going to have some fun and probably get some people upset. So the topic today is ladies, stop leading with your dicks. And I mean what I say and I'll explain what I mean in a moment. Before I jump in to uh, express what I mean, and hopefully you'll get some value from this, it's not going to be an insulting thing, it's going to be a very positive thing. That's my intention. Let me choose, I'll introduce myself first and give you some background on me so I can then explain what I'm talking about. Um, my name is Barry Silver. <laughs> I am an inspirational speaker, best-selling author, and love and relationships expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I'm going to talk about this. Um, it's also what inspires me to work with women and also what inspired these talks almost three years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today... It's episode number, thank, thank you, Paul. I want to get some attention. Hi, nice to see you, Paul. Thanks for being in the broadcast. Um, today, I want to speak a bit more bluntly. This is episode number 858. I've done a bunch of these talks, and most of them are about service to women. But I thought today, let me just uh, take the gloves off. Well, I've done that a few times, but it's, it's not going to be a rant, unless it becomes one. But I want to speak to something that I've become very aware of. And I was actually on a friend's Facebook Live this morning. I think the broadcast is on my wall as well, uh, for her group about uh, feminine rising. And I was very polite there. Not so much here. <laughs> so again, this is episode number 858, and the title is, Ladies, um, Stop Leading With Your Dicks. And I'm saying it this way because too many women are. And I know it's a physical impossibility, but you're going to get the meeting in a moment. Um, I've said this so many times before in broadcasting and conversations about how the business world was created by men, for men, and women have been trying to fit in ever since. And that's kind of the problem we're facing, or I should say the challenge women have had to overcome. And it's also about the fact that since the feminist movement upset the apple cart in the 60s, there's been also some change about how men, how men and women relate, <coughs> excuse me, how men and women date, and how men and women, um, well, compete. And that's one of the problems as well. I will hopefully explain all in a moment, but let me just drop a few more pieces on the table. We're in a world nowadays where as far as I'm concerned, we've proven that patriarchy does not work. And I'm being, that's a global statement, I know. But we're living in a, in a, on a, in a culture, in a planet, in a, in certainly in a civilization in this country, where the patriarchy we've had in place for many, many years is no longer functioning. So what I'm going to speak to is actually going to ideally, I see, I'll trust it does, inspire a new direction, a new conversation. And I've been hinting at this for a while now, so this is going to be um, provocative, shall we say. So, what I mean by the title, just to get it out of the way, because I don't want to hold off too long and keep you in suspense, is that most women have been trained by our culture, the ones especially in business and who are leading out of the world and stepping out and doing their thing, they've been, leading, they've been taught to lead the same way men do. And to be blunt, men lead with their dicks too. I did a Facebook Live two years ago called Men Don't Be a Dick. So this, this framing has apparently has leverage because it got the most views of any of my broadcasts. But what I mean by this point is that the male, and I don't mean masculine by the way, the male way of physically existing in the world is you've got to push through and be, and be the biggest dick in town sort of thing. And that's not necessarily a physical appendage, I'm talking about way of being. Our culture that's been built on the patriarchal model is rewarding the men who do what they want to do, take charge, get things done at the price of other people. That's kind of been the model we've been living by, which is a dick-led society. And watching what's happening in the political arena, it's an ext extreme exaggeration of the same thing. The problem I see is that women, to a large degree, have been doing the same thing to fit in. And it's a massive error in approach. Because ladies, your strength isn't in what you don't actually have as an appendage. It's also not in the way that men behave. And the discrepancy is that the training women have gotten from society, from their fathers, from the culture, is to succeed in the world, you've got to act like the men and do what the men do. Based on results, the way we're going right now, it isn't the best choice. <coughs> Excuse me, I've had it. Today, a tickle shot off my throat. It's been bugging me all day, but hopefully I'll get through this talk without any major upheavals. So in this conversation, and in this point I want to make here, is that we're facing a, well, I'll say a turning point and a choice point. Up to this point, as far as I'm aware, we have had a culture that's been led by, um, I can't remember the way of saying it, by, by a dick-driven culture. That it's about 
running the show, making things happen, getting it done, and screw some, screw anybody else. And women have been trained to do the same thing. As I said before, women have been trained to act like men in the business world because it's a world designed and built by men for men. That also, by the way, bleeds over into the dating arena. Many women have, well, at least some of the ones I've dated over the years, have been very much driven by their dicks. They took charge and were, I mean, I was flattered. They were asking me out, but it was there was a, a impossible wall to climb where I couldn't hold the space for them to soften because they wouldn't soften. Before I knew what I, that was before I knew what I'm doing. I, I know a lot, I'm going to say that no, not what I was doing. I know better now, I'll say it that way. One of the biggest things I've had to learn is, and I think it's true for all men, is that we also shouldn't be leading with our dicks either. And that's a big upset for the apple cart for what people have been doing for the last 150 years, maybe longer than that. Both men, so this is the, this is the secret thing I'm going to drop on the table because it, well, I wasn't aware of it when I created the title anyway, is that both men and women will do better to not lead with their dicks. Now men have them, women don't, physically speaking. At the same time, at the same time, there's a big shift happening because the world needs heart more than dick, to be simple about it. So my statement is really an invitation for women and for men, so the men are watching this hopefully get the value as well, is that we are in a, sh a cultural shift. However, we're not all on board yet. This cultural shift is the only way that we're going to save our planet, to be blunt. It's also the only way we're going to save our civilization, which are not the same thing, by the way. Um, I mean, the planet's going to go on anyway without us, but we may not be here to witness it. So besides all the things about climate change and everything else we want to do and proactively shifting and everything else, there's a bigger piece of the puzzle to focus on, which is how we live culturally in harmony with each other, or just say in collaboration with each other. That's the biggest piece. And ladies, in your feminine is where your true power resides. In your feminine is where the gifts that you have innately can be expressed in the way in the world that will save, ourselves, save us from ourselves, basically. The dick-driven culture, which men and women are both doing, is rushing us towards a cliff where there's no um, safety net. And we ain't going to fly it. We're going to straight off the edge. So ladies especially, and my encouragement to you especially ladies, is to take your hearts, I would say, and take your, um, I don't want to go there, that's going to be another thing entirely. Okay. <laughs> I was going down another path, I'm not going, yeah. Okay, let's back up a second. Hi, Cara, thanks for the love, nice to see you in my broadcast. <laughs> Hi, Libby, nice to see you as well. Um, what I'm attempting to say here is that doing the same old thing, the same old way is the definition of insanity and it's going to get no result change. Ladies, we collectively, need you in your feminine because in your feminine is where the power of the of, of life itself lives in feminine we men have another choice to do and i'll talk about that in a moment but ladies what we what we need as a culture what we need as a society is the feminine heart the feminine spirit the feminine devotion to collaborate to cooperate and to create inclusion so we can change the direction we're going on for the next millennia and beyond probably too when you ladies remember this, and this is the thing that's been pivoting for me, is that women have been forgetting this about themselves. They've been embodying male traits to get things done, even though they're in female bodies. Now, there are, and let me, let me preface this, or I should say to a sidebar, there are many in the population who identify with a different polarity or a different resonance or a different um, physiology. So I'm not speaking to that, I'm speaking to the general population, which is the majority of which is women inhabiting female bodies, men inhabiting male bodies, and their higher calling, women moves their feminine, men moves their masculine. So let me put that in clarity, because that's the framing I'm talking about here. Neither one of the masculine or feminine types, archetypes, polarities, whatever you want to call it, are dick-driven, to be blunt. Either side is driven by a deeper calling. For women, it's a feminine power authority that's the power of the oceans themselves it's a massive power and ladies you've been told a bunch of lies about how powerful you're not and it's not true your power is majestic your power is massive your power is way bigger than when you try to be like the men so if you take that to heart ladies your power is in not being like the men your power is in being in honoring of your feminine 
owning that power authority and i'm not talking about the goddess movement that's a whole other teaching i'm speaking about true feminine heart true feminine leadership true feminine authority and that's what's needed more than ever so i'm giving you that as a one little hint so let me speak to the men for a second in the masculine side because for the masculine what what we haven't been doing but what we can do more often and what most of us can wake up to quite a few of us are doing it now but more of us can wake up to it is how do we lead from our spine not from our dick because it's a very different place leading from our spine is a place of strength it also has to come through the heart energetically so when we lead from our spines we're leading from a place of heartfelt presence depth of soul and authority and direction which gives us the ability to lead in, in integrity and in humility. That sounded very fancy, but what I'm attempting to say here, it ain't ego. Because the dick-driven mind is really an ego-driven mentality. Because it's a selfish, take, 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 energetic. I'm not talking about that. So the shift is gonna be a paradigm shift for a lot of people. For men, especially moving to the masculine out of the macho, out of the ego-driven dick, to a place that is much more authority, there's more sure divine authority, and connected to a deeper place, and ladies, owning your feminine, remembering a feminine, connecting back into your feminine is where your true strength, your true authority, your true gifts lie. And combining those two together, first of all, creates an incredible relationship paradigm, by the way. It's one that's the work I've been studying and teaching and practicing for the last 12 years, 13 years, 12 years. Having that understanding is clear, but taking that out into the world, hmm, expressing that into the expression, full expression of life is massive. So. This, this is a simple reminder, <laughs> the mechanics of which I'm not going to go into here, but giving you the, at least the positional points so you understand will give you references to look forward to. Because if this is something you want to find out more about, reach out to me, I'll talk to you about it and give you some guidance. But in this talk, I want to just drop the seed so you think about this. It's when you make your decisions in life, when you choose your relationship partners, when you choose the job you do, when you do your job, when you're at the world, when you're driving, when you're being in the world, how do you participate? Are you participating from your heart or from something a little less caring? Are you led by a deeper calling, a spiritual calling perhaps? Or are you just doing something for self-satisfaction self -satisfaction and self-aggrandizement? Self is the right word. Which one is it? I'm not going to give you the answers to these. These are questions I'm going to throw at you to play with. It's your homework. Yes, I'm giving you homework. The choice you have is to consider a bigger place to play, a more fulfilled, expressive, and fulfilling and, and effective place to play, or the same old, same old. And if your life isn't going the way you want it to, you might want to change it. If life is going downhill, if the life is going sideways, if life is not being fulfilling, then I'm giving you some encouragement to choose differently. So consider what I said. What if you don't lead with your dick, man or women? But you lead from your soul, from your heart, from your compassion, from your collaboration, from your strength, and from your wisdom. That is my encouragement to you. Thanks for the love, by the way, Marla. Nice to see you. So I'm inviting you, encouraging you, and suggesting to you that there's another choice. And you've got to make the decision to choose it. So I'm keeping this a bit shorter today because I, I don't I want to save my throat. But I also want to give you this some suggestions. So what I'm going to say is, if you want to reach out to me, I'll leave a contact form in the comments. You can reach out to me and talk. If you want to reach out for that purpose if this makes sense to you great go for it play with it explore it and see what happens if you don't care about this then see you later but my invitation to you is hopefully this is striking a chord and maybe giving you a nudge giving you a um a tickle shall we say of what's possible this has been my own transformational journey over the last 15 20 years actually more than that but I'm very clear of what the truth is now, of what effectiveness is and where service really lies to serve ourselves in the world in the right way around. Now we can contribute to society and collaborate and save our culture, basically. I mean, this is a big mission, I know, but I feel it calling, so I'm stepping into that more and more. So I'd love you to join me in this conversation to maybe join me in this direction as well and to add your voice to the conversation. So again, I'll put a link in the comments for a conversation with me. It's, it's just a contact form. You can reach out in the chat. Um, just things else I want to put in the comments I will put a link in there for a chat for those of you those of you ladies who want some help to clarify why your relationships are getting screwed up this is part of it maybe I'll put a link in the comments for a chat with me so you can talk to me and that's a complimentary gift so those two will be in the comments um, and I'm leaving you with this 
how can you be more aligned to your heart and less to the less to it being the dickish move i'm, I'm coming up, i'm using up the ways to use it say this so with that i think i'll leave it at that um this is my daily facebook live by the way if you haven't seen my broadcast before i do this every day at 5 p.m pacific time usually sometimes it moves um and this is my um mission to serve to inspire and to awaken hopefully this has nudged you a little bit in that direction um i, I welcome your comments thoughts and etc etc this is a daily live stream facebook live broadcast on my personal page on facebook which is barry selby the replays go to my business page on facebook which is barry selby the author you can watch the replays there all of them well excuse me facebook seems to be removing the old ones so at least 300 of them live on my first business page which is barry selby the author you can like my page but I do have them, every single one of them, backed up on my YouTube channel, so definitely you can watch them there. So my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, my name, as most of my social media is. And you can find me by subscribing to my channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist on there is called Messages from the Masculine. And there's all 857 plus this one, 858, out there for you to watch, review, and take note from. I'm here to inspire, to awaken, to nudge, and sometimes to scare people. <laughs> Uh, so I hope this topic has helped you and give you some insight. I appreciate you being with me as always. I thank you for watching. I'll be back in tomorrow with something different. We'll see. Um, but I hope this has given you something to think about. If it has, I've done my job. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.